2006, we bought this barn along with our house in southwest France. And at the time, the barn was three times as long as it presently is. Due to some structural issues, we demolished two thirds of it, which left a 20 foot by 20 foot square barn. At the end of 2022, I decided this would be my new workshop, replacing the small loft workshop. Here's Johnny. The left hand side of the barn was always used for garden storage, whereas we keep our lawn mower in the front of the right hand side. The back of the right hand side was still a dirt floor, with an accumulation of 15 years worth of builder's waste and rubbish. So the first thing I needed to do was open up the back of the barn to let in some light. This opening would eventually receive some windows. Once I'd created this opening, I needed to make the first of many visits to the local builders merchants. Initially, I needed some cement for my concrete and some timber to frame out the rear opening. With my new timber, I could roughly frame out the opening for the window. The windows were recycled from a previous project. And because the windows were repurposed, I needed to create an exact size opening into which they would sit. All the accumulated builder's waste was spread evenly around the floor to create a base to concrete on. The base was cast in two parts and I really wish I'd paid this much attention to the higher floor at the front of the barn. But these areas were cast in piecemeal fashion when we had spare concrete from other projects that was going on around the house renovation. To cast the second part of the slab, I first needed to remove the old wood burner that had become redundant from the house renovation. I was hoping I could use it in the barn, but when I looked at it after all those years of storage, it was damaged and wasn't really worth the space. The second phase of the slab was cast on Christmas Eve 2002. And along with the inside slab, a section of external slab was cast at the front of the barn, which would double up as a work area and an outdoor seating area. I also got rid of the remaining builder's rubble in this cast. A couple of days later, when the slab had dried enough to walk on it, I couldn't help but to get my tools together and move them into the right hand side in what was to become the new workshop area. The workshop was, and still is, off grid without electricity supply. The next few days revolved around closing the hole in the back of the barn. And to do this, I needed to make a window frame that would accept the two double glaze sashes that we had been saving. Once I had established the side of the window frame, I could close up the gap underneath the window. I also needed to buy and fit two pair of these hinges which are common in French windows. With all this preparation I was happy that the windows fitted at the first attempt. One thing you'll notice throughout the next few minutes is how out of plumb the back wall of the barn is and this is why I'm fitting the windows on what looks to be a jaunty angle. In fact they are perfectly plumb. And once the window frame was installed, I could now repair the hole underneath and at the side of the opening, as well as create rebates and a sill underneath. Here you can clearly see how far the back wall is from plumb. So all the linings around the window also had to be cut to this shape. I was really lucky during this part of the build that my local builder's merchant had some inch by six Douglas fir on special offer. And here are some great clips of my Hungarian Vizsla Gracie enjoying the new window. All the work you've seen so far was done over my Christmas holidays last year. And the last few clips are me just closing up any remaining large holes. At the end of 2022, I had already made the decision to move here and to this workshop 
full time. And this was the first clue that we was moving things into this workshop when I brought some of my Festool machines. In early spring 2023, the first job I did was to start to create the dividing partition between the workshop and what would be the storage area. I decided rather than using metal stud partitioning, I would create this partition from robust lengths of timber stud. This was because I wanted to load bare onto this wall later in the build. Also, the partition is built partial height. In other words, it stops just above what will eventually be the ceiling height. And that's so I can store materials and, more importantly, my ladders within the roof space. Studs are generally at 400mm centres with some centre-height noggins and is cut around the sloping rear wall. When it came to plasterboarding the wall, I ran into difficulty. For some reason, there seemed to be a national shortage of plasterboard, and I eventually bought these 600 by 2500 pieces from a builder's merchant I had not used before, but were very helpful and let me cut them into much smaller pieces so I could get them in the car. Also, during this weekend, we encountered issues with our electricity supply that kept turning on and off. The joys of living in rural countryside. But eventually EDF seemed to sort the problem. With our electricity problems and buying much smaller plasterboard than I planned for, the job took a little bit longer than I hoped but got done in the end and the garden store now looks really well. The next task was to demolish the old central partition and because the partition had been concreted into the floor in the past, I had to cut this out, creating a trench that needed to be infilled with screed. But with the partition removed, I could now see the full size of my new workshop. It measures 10 foot across and 18 foot wide. I now wanted to turn my attention to the doors into the workshop. These doors were never really made for this space. We just took them off the part of the barn that we demolished. The doors are made from 28 mm tongue groove and veed boards. The same boards that you see shutters made out of around France. Once I had created two new jams for the door, I decided to make the doors in situ. In other words, I hung the first piece of the door on the hinges and then built the doors as I went. At the time, it just seemed an obvious thing to do to ensure that the doors fitted correctly. Can't have been too bad an idea because the video received some favourable comments. I have published around about 20 videos on the building of this barn and I will link them all in the description. The second pair was conventionally made at the bench because it was a rainy day, but there is no difference between the two pair. The doors were finely painted with Cuprinol's seagrass, which matches the other furniture dotted around the garden. The summer came and my regular viewers noticed that there was more and more of my tools appearing that used to be in the small loft workshop. And to house these tools, I needed to start to create the walls that would eventually house cupboards and shelving. All the walls are lined with parquet flooring, which not only gives me a strong robust wall, but will also allow me to fix things to the wall wherever I please. I have decided to insulate the workshop the best I can. However, the intermediate partition is filled with acoustic insulation that was left over from a project in the house. Whereas I've added much higher performing thermal insulation to the rear wall. There are still some pieces of the old structure that need to be removed. Now there are various cracks and crevices in the fabric of the exterior of the barn that let in creepy crawlies. So I decided to buy some garden fabric because it's really cheap to line the exterior wall before insulation. And now we are into August 
peak summer months. During the course of this year, we have bought our first French car. And it was advisable to build a carport to house it in. So, where part of the old barn once stood is now a carport. Initially, I didn't deem this project to be part of the workshop build. But it's become so useful as a covered outside working area, it is now integral into the workshop plans. The carport is supported by the left hand end of the workshop and is stood on three concreted in stilts on the left hand side. And is just slightly larger than the inside of the workshop. The old bench that was once in the workshop is now under cover within the carport and it's great for making those initial cuts on long pieces before they go into the workshop. And the carport also houses my timber storage rack which is built high up in the eaves and it was amazing how spacious the workshop felt when I had populated this shelf and got rid of all the timber that was stored within the workshop. Now it's time to get back onto that crooked rear wall and it took me far longer to do than I thought it would. I had to build an independent lining from timber stud work and all this work was done just in the nick of time because my tools from the small loft workshop all arrived to their new home. With all my valuable tools now in the workshop, I was under pressure to finish the rear wall. Because without the rear wall being finished, I can't start to build tool storage and a workbench. But it made my job much easier now that my best tools are here. The wall is finished with the same parquet flooring, but has a much higher performing thermal insulation. and I use the weed suppression fabric to keep the bugs at bay. In theory the quality of the footage should now have increased because I'm filming on my best camera. So I've now finished the rear wall I'm really excited to start my workbench build. Rather than buying some plain timber, I decided to buy some construction grade timber and process it myself. It was a small amount of work for a huge cash saving. And because I'd been separated from my tools for so long, it was nice to use some of my better tooling. The bench is very simple in construction. It is a frame that is fitted into the corner. The compartments are divided by the same timber clad in melamine phase chipboard. This provides a solid structure as well as underneath tool storage. I have to say it was really enjoyable making this bench after all the structural work I had to do to get to this point. This is probably the first of two benches that will be built in this workshop and I'm yet undecided on what to do for the second one although I do have some plans but for now I'm really happy that I have a bench and I have somewhere to store at least some of my tools. I could not help but to capture this fabulous sunset over the small barn workshop. OK, so the intermediate wall and the back wall is not perfectly square, but nothing a good old fashioned scribe cannot sort.
My intentions for this bench top lies elsewhere and not with this piece of 18mm MFC chipboard, but it was cheap and it gives me a ready made top. I'm sure the final top will be more robust and more long lasting, for now I'm happy to continue with this MFC. It's always good to experiment with other materials. The last few worktop builds have all featured the MFT holes made with this path guide jig and even though it's an expensive outlay I think I have now got my money's worth. I have laid the full grid of 3mm holes out for this bench but I will only open the 20mm holes when I need them. The reason I'm using MFT spacing here is I want to mount my bench dog crosscut station. A crosscut station that provided the small loft workshop with exceptional accuracy. I would recommend this setup to any woodworker. I finally got to christen my new workbench with its first cut. As a content creator it always interests me what videos do well and what videos don't on YouTube. And it doesn't always have to be the most complex project to do well. And these four cantilevered calls I made for the workbench are my most watched video of 2023. The manufacture is very simple. It is four lengths of 2x3, about a metre long with this T slot groove in the top so I can clamp things to the top of the bars over sail the bench top. This increases the surface area of the bench without taking up any real space in the workshop. The coals were made at the same time as my router table which uses the calls as its support. These calls are fantastic when processing large panels. The router table is my first tool I have built in the workshop and a build that was necessary to facilitate the next part of the build. It was built from an offcut from the bench build. And houses my Triton router in the Greg plate and also the router infill plate I built for my outdoor workbench when I was at the small loft workshop. Router tables are an extremely versatile tool and every small workshop should have some kind of router table. For what this project is, it's probably a little bit overboard, but it was a real fun project to me. And finally, the last episode up to now for the construction of the small barn workshop was fitting the front frame to the bench. Not only does this frame make the bench look more professional, but it adds strength to the bottom shelves and also it features T-slot grooves along the top to mount my rail support for my cutting station and to act as a vise along the entire length of the bench. The frame was fitted over a couple of freezing December evenings which reminded me I need to move on and finish the side and the ceiling to make sure the workshop is properly and fully insulated for the rest of the winter and also against the heat 
next summer. And this project has also been very nice because it's enabled me to draw together all the various components I've built along the way. 2023 has been an eventful year for myself and my family and at time progress on the barn seems to have progressed at a snail's pace. But this is only a fraction of the projects I have done this year. So the goals for 2024 are to finish the other wall, are to finish the ceiling, install some electrics, to build some wall cupboards and to install some proper tool storage. As Christmas is approaching and the year draws to a close, I want to say thank you to you, my viewers. All your subscriptions, comments and likes are very much appreciated and inspire me to build this workshop. The progress on the workshop build will continue in the new year and I've got some more content to bring you before the end of the year. But finally, I would like to say to you and your family, have a great Christmas.